I was going to post a response video today to Cameron's really interesting interview with Philip Goff about Goff's conversion to Christianity, and that will be forthcoming in the next day or so. But in preparation for making that video response, I went to Cameron's YouTube page, and I saw that yesterday he'd posted this video, a short nine-minute video, talking about how Donald Trump had posted a viral prayer. And I watched this. So he begins by uh, taking us to, I guess, his Twitter page where Donald Trump prays to Michael the Archangel to defend us in battle, etc. And then Cameron says, what does this mean? Does this mean that Donald Trump is moving toward conversion to Christianity or maybe even to Catholic Christianity or, or not? And he says, I'm not sure, but let's continue to pray for him. Uh, and then he segues and talks about angels. So I want to just talk about this video because honestly, I'm very disappointed in this. Um, what Cameron doesn't, first of all, consider is another very obvious hypothesis, which is that Donald Trump is continuing a consistent pattern which he has engaged in over the last nine years of cynically exploiting uh, evangelical, conservative, and Catholic Christians as the core of his voting base. And that given that we're now in an election period, he's appealing to them through this overtly cynical appeal to religious categories in order to motivate them to support him in the election over against Kamala Harris. That's the first point. And that seems to me to be the obvious interpretation of what this is. It's a cynical, crass, exploitive appeal to Christian categories. Second, another thing to keep in mind here is this is a war battle prayer. Well, back to 2016, Donald Trump has been consistently attempting to undermine confidence in the electoral process and the democratic process. Prior to the election in 2016, he consistently was repeating, I think as early as the summer, that the election, election was rigged and that they should be highly suspicious of the election. And even after the election, after he lost, or sorry, after he won and Hillary Clinton lost, he, he even then said that he believes that there is um, there are still millions of votes that he should have received, which were suppressed. And he had Mike Pence lead a committee and look into where these missing votes were and they never turned up because there were no such votes. But that is part of his long history of attempting to undermine confidence in the electoral process. In 2020, he did the same thing. Uh, but of course, in this case, he lost the election and he had like 50 different court suits that he lost all, but I think two of them on minor issues, challenging the electoral process. Finally, he attempted to get Mike Pence uh, to refuse to ratify the electoral results on January 6, and that didn't happen. So there was a violent insurrection uh, in, in the Capitol. And you had, of course, people break in and smear feces on the walls and so on. This is, and now he's repeating this same rhetoric in, in this election, election cycle, saying you can't trust, um, you can't trust mail-in voting, saying that we need to monitor the voting stations, saying that the Democrats are trying to get illegals to vote and so on. It goes on and on and on. Uh, a lot of this is linked to white uh, dis the great displacement or the great replacement theory that Democrats and liberals and Jews are bringing in uh, non-Caucasian immigrants to replace the native, quote unquote, Caucasian population of America. And that feeds right into his continued appeal to the rhetoric demonizing immigrants and refugees, including the lies about Haitians eating dogs and cats. Uh, about um, Aurora, Colorado being taken over by gangs and so on. My, my brother-in-law lives in Aurora, Colorado. The city's doing just fine. Thank you very much. But that's the second aspect of this tweet, is he's exploiting religious categories and he's appealing to battle language to motivate his uh, supporters in case he doesn't win the election, that he can seek to attain power by another means, just like he did in 2020. 
That's the obvious interpretation of what's going on here. Now, just to add on to that, that in the last two months, there's been zero evidence that Donald Trump has changed in any way, apart from continuing to be the same raven, vulgar politician and person in public life that he always has been. Just in the last two or three days, he said that he believes Kamala Harris is mentally disabled and was born mentally disabled, which, of course, is a very offensive and just disgusting thing to say. He's uh, lied in the last two days, saying that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden did not reach out to the governors of North Carolina and Georgia, given all the flooding, which they those governors have contradicted. They, in fact, have been in regular communication with the White House. This man is a serial liar. He's a manipulator. He's, of course, I could go on with in terms of an adjudicated sexual abuser, a fraudster, um, who's, and a convicted felon. And he's shown zero repentance for any of those things. What then is the point of this video that Cameron posted? It doesn't say anything, except it continues to peak interest and hope, I guess, among MAGA Christianity that Trump is, in fact, a changed person. And I, I cannot help but look at posting this kind of video with vacuous analysis, the absence of analysis, and irresponsible analysis, one that suggests the evidence really underdetermines what's going on here, when I think the overwhelming evidence, again, is that he's cynically exploiting the Christian population, uh, that supports him, and he's also in continuing this pattern of invoking battle motifs uh, to undergird his attempt to undermine the democratic process.